Okay, we're moving on with the second part of our lesson. So yesterday we got introduced to what a robot is. We also talked a little bit about main ideas and details. Um, and we talked a little bit about the struggle of defining what a robot is because robots are everything from our little toys here to what we're going to spend the next few days talking about, how we use robots in hospitals, how we use robots in factories and things like that. Um, and so we're just going to get started. They kind of introduced all those things here from assembling automobiles to working at making the cookies to helping out in hospitals to different things that can help you at your house. Um, today's lesson is a history lesson. Let's talk about the history of the word robot and how we've advanced it over time. Okay, so I got to try to scroll my screen so it fits there. Sorry, I thought I had it set and I obviously did not. Here we go. It says, say the word robot, and most people think of robots they have seen on television or in the movies. Number one in your notes. For decades, these imaginary machines shaped our ideas about what robots should look like and what they should be able to do. So long before we had the technology needed to build robots, these fictional robots inspired us. Um, before they produced, they produced interest in designing and building real robots, pushing us to see how far our imagination and creativity uh, could take us. So, guys, I'm a huge fan of Star Wars. So you had R2D2 and C3PO, which you know made the cut here. Uh, R2D2, C3PO did not make the cut, but I, I remember watching those movies. Like, man, I wish I had a robot like that. C3PO can speak millions of languages and do all these cool things and R2-D2 has a movie projector and he can fly and wow let's do that and of course as a kid I just thought if they made that for a movie then it actually has to be a real robot that they are just now filming into the movie. Uh, reality guys is it's fiction and I wasn't smart enough to know that but they inspired us so if I can dream it up and put it in a movie the question is, can we then get there and work at it for real? Okay, so you got the first three filled in. Now, what's, what's the biggest thing? One, I have to have the imagination. So what can I dream up? And then two, how can we pull it off? Let's figure that out. Next paragraph. Although the term robot is less than 100 years old, it's actually, guys, celebrating its 100th birthday right now in, in 1921. Now, they said less than 100 because your science book's about 10 years old. People have dreamed about robots and how they might be used for thousands of years. In fact, in ancient Greece, the famous man named Aristotle thought that one day machines might do the work for humans as they obeyed directions. So it's not just can I invent a machine, it's can I invent a machine that listens. 2,000 years later, we have robots working in nearly every aspect of our lives. So he predicted it, and 2,000 years later, we're figuring it out. In addition to our imagination, robot development has depended in a large part on the development of other technologies, mainly computers. So you're cruising through number five in your notes, guys. Reality is I need these computers to be able to handle and make the decisions the instructions, the obeying directions that are necessary. So how do we pull it off? Number six, as computer systems became more capable, computers smaller, sensors more sensitive, and computer programs more precise, robots have become able to do much more complex tasks. So it just comes down to, guys, to do some of these things takes time. Robot designers work to increase a robot's ability to solve problems. The goal is to design a robot that can, number one, survey its environment, analyze the data it's collected from its environment, make a judgment, and then take the appropriate action. Sounds super cool. The hardest thing with this, guys, is we have to write the computer program that does that. And we have to write the computer program that makes a judgment. And that is very, very difficult. We've made tons of movies out there, guys, of robots that have, you know, gained wisdom. You read the book The Homework Machine on, oh, the machine now knows how to create its own power source and think for itself. Um, where that's science fiction, guys, this make a judgment thing is sometimes 
simple as we will talk about with some of these and sometimes that's very difficult in other words you, when you make a judgment what are you doing you're doing all this you're surveying an environment and you're analyzing data and you're making a judgment to take the appropriate actions and sometimes guys you and I take the wrong actions because we made the wrong judgment I see a kid crying I think they're hurt I'd never think crying is tears of joy and yet I might say, oh, do you need a hug? What's wrong? Uh, I just won the race. Oh, I thought you lost the race because you're crying. I didn't realize you were crying tears of joy. And so those are the problems that come with it. In turn, improved robot design opens new technologies. For example, we now have a robot capable of moving 0 0.0000001 centimeters at a time. And you and I would think, why would we want anything to move so small a thing? That literally is allowing us to make things at one atom or molecule at a time. We'll talk about this, guys, in the next lesson. This is called nanotechnology, and it is changing the way we are going to operate in this world. Okay, boom, super cool. Now let's get the timeline. Here's everything that's happened. We start up here. In 270 BC, a Greek engineer named Sibetus builds organs and water clocks with movable fingers. Now, when I first read this, I'm like, build organs? Like, my heart an organ and my lung an organ? No, like, organ that's a piano an organ? And so it's got things, guys, that have figures that move. So you might... Look at that. I wrote the word fingers instead of figures. You might want to change that and circle that because it definitely doesn't have movable fingers. It has movable figures. So in my head, guys, you got this like cuckoo clock that when the hour changes, the little bird pops out, cuckoo, cuckoo. He's got that. Guys, that thing's 2,270 years old. That's awesome. Boom. Huge jump in time. 2,000 years later, Jacques Valkensen who's a French engineer, creates an automatic duck that can drink, eat, and perform other functions. So we're starting to get things that you know you could put something into it. I don't want you to think like it eats like you, like I take food in, I digest food, I use food, uh, I go to the bathroom and get rid of the waste product. It's, it's not that crazy, guys, but it's starting. Chunk of time later, Joseph Marie Jacquard, another French weaver, another Frenchman, this guy's a weaver in the Industrial Revolution of making cloth. He invents a method for controlling looms, that's what weaves the threads together, using cards with holes punched in them. These are literally our first computers, guys. They have punch cards in them, and based on if there's a punch or not a punch, it does certain things. So I know how much cloth, maybe what color strings to use, how tight, how length. He's got this system rolling. That's just over 200 years old. Bump over here, 1921, Czech playwright Karel Kapek introduces the word robot in the play Romsen's Universal Robots. Robot comes from the Czech word robota, which means drudgery. So you and I usually think of these cool robots that are super awesome. They literally would have put this thing into a factory, guys, where you're doing the same work over and over again. That's what it comes from, and we'll talk about that, that that is definitely a use of those things. Cruising over here, a mechanical man and dog, you got a picture of the dog, appears at the New York World's Fair. Guys, we don't really have World's Fair anymore, but um, they used to have fairs that would rotate along, around. So Paris had a World's Fair. That's why they built the Eiffel Tower. Um, I think Chicago had the World Fair once. That's where we built the world's first huge Ferris wheel. And so you go there and you just try to outdo each other. So in 3940, we tried to have mechanical um, robots, a dog and a man. In 51, the first remote-operated jointed arm handles radioactive materials for the Atomic Energy Commission. So I need a robot to use this dangerous material, and I can control it from a distance. So we've now got the technology to remote control things. Ten years after that, the first industrial robot begins working in our automobile industry. Uh, this is going to be the huge use of robots today. Ten years almost after that, nine years, Shaky, which is the first mobile robot with vision, figures out how to move around obstacles. So here we have a remote control. 
19 years later, it can do it itself. Now, guys, in 1970, we're super proud that it can move around obstacles. I don't want you to think it has eyeballs. What it literally is is it has sensors, and so it would start to go and say, I'm about to run into the wall, churn 90 degrees. Okay, there's no obstacle there. Start moving this way. Run into an obstacle, churn. Run into an obstacle, churn. So those are the things are working. Um, we did that with our vacuum cleaners, guys. Today, we have our iRobot vacuum cleaners. Super cool. Back in the day, it was literally start to sweep, bump into the wall, churn, mm, bump, churn, mm, bump, churn. and it just, it literally just bounced its way off of everything until it vacuumed up your room um, by running into everything. Today, we can program that thing so it has the cool sensors that we talked about, um, uh, and today you can, you know, literally take pictures of your room and program it so I can say, hey, go sweep in front of the TV, and it knows how to just go vacuum right in front of the TV. 50 years in the making. Uh, 85, the first robot-aided surgery is performed. Use in hospitals. 94, Dante 2 is the six-legged walking robot that is on a volcano in Alaska, heading into dangerous places where humans can't go. 97, we're landing on Mars. Other dangerous places humans can't get to, right? So now we've used robots in hospitals to help us out factories, um, dangerous places, cool things like that. Cruising across, we got the 2000s. The latest robots resemble humans are starting to appear. They can perform tasks like climbing stairs. It's Guys, it's a lot of programming that get into that to try to get it. 2001, we get robots to help put together the International Space Station up in space. So you can imagine all the work that needs to do to build something that floats around in space. Uh, humans out there obviously can work on that, guys, but humans need oxygen. Robots do not. So you could leave human, I mean robots out there much longer. Uh, 2002, researchers develop a robotic assistant for the elderly. And we'll talk about this one. This one's big where... Elderly want to live on their own, guys, but the elderly are always concerned of, am I going to be safe? What happens if I fall and there's no one in the house? How will they know? We now have robots for that. And last but not least, we're down here with Mars again. We sent two rovers, one called Spirit and one called Opportunity, and they explored. Guys, we're just in the news again. Mars has, we sent the next Mars rover there. So we have been sending things to Mars for a number of years as we try to gain more and more data on the planet with the hope of, in the future, is it a possibility to live there? We know Venus is too hot for us, so now the next thing is, is Mars a possibility? That just comes from, hey, the way our population is growing, we're going to run out of space on our planet, and so what's next? And so they're planning to do those things. So you got a kind of a cool history lesson on how we're developing, and guys, the last one is 2004, because like I said, your science book's a little bit older. Today, obviously, we have super cool robots that are doing a lot of awesome things. And there's only two things that are holding us back to keep it going. One is our imagination, and then two is the technology there. As technology gets smaller, robots will continue to improve. Okay, you got one misspelling for extra credit. The other thing you could put for extra credit is robots in Star Wars. Greatest movie ever made. Big time cool on the robots. If you wanted to know how we actually made Star Wars, this was a remote controlled robot with a little guy inside it and he drove it around. <laughs> yeah, never knew that, but now you do. All right, have a great day, guys.